Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know, my name is Teresa and I am a self-taught watercolorist. And in today's video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step tutorial on how to paint this beautiful loose landscape. Okay guys, let me walk you through very quickly all the supplies that I have for today's tutorial. But in case you need an in-depth watercolor supply guys for beginner, I also have a separate video for you as well. So don't forget to check that out. Okay, in today's video, I'm going to use the Arches 100% cotton paper. Um, for this one, I cut out from the big sheet and the size of it will be 7 by 4 inches. And for brushes, I'll be using two brushes for today. And the first one will be the Princeton Acor Elite Round Brush size 8. And the second one will be Silver Black Velvet size 6. I also have a pencil so that I can do a slight catch at the beginning. And for pens, I'll be using my Cotman by Windsor and Dillon Pens palette as always. Um, and you will need two cups of clean water as well. And I also have a masking tip so I can tape down the paper and we're gonna have very clean and nice edges when we finish the painting. And of course my iPad so that I can have the photo reference to refer while I'm painting. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. First, I'm going to use my masking tape to just tape down the paper. First, I'm going to grab my pencil and I also have the iPad here with me. And when we do the sketch, this is the time for us to look at the photo and figure out where is the lightest area where is the lightest value area and where is the darkest value area so um, it's very important that you figure out the value of a photo because later on it's going to affect into the painting so one tip that I want to provide you is that in order to uh, figure out the value of a photo you can actually screen your eyes like this so that you can it, it will remove all of the detail and all you see is just like the block of colors and you will know that uh, where's the darkest value is and where's the lightest value is and uh, when you're sketching you can actually mark that area so later on when you remember and you can put more color in it um, and after finish the sketch, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is to mix the colors. And in order to mix the color, uh, you will have to look at the photo reference that you have and try to uh, color match. Or if you don't like the color in this photo, you can always change depends on whatever color you like. You don't have to follow exactly the colors in the photo reference. Feel free to experiment and mix any colors that you feel like is resonate with you for the sky if you look at the photo reference you will see that here we have a very dramatic sky with a very big uh, chunk of dark clouds but here i'm going to do a little bit of change i will make the sky simpler than it looks in the photo um, i want the focus to be more on the landscape so i will have the very simple sky the uh i will use my favorite a combination of the sky which is the ocean marine mixed with pan gray I also wet the paper first and uh, start applying the colors so that the uh, pens will blend well with the paper without leaving any harsh light here I want the sky to be the area where it has the lightest value so I'm just gonna keep the color is very light and um, as you can see I'll just put the color here and there and blend and also apply uh, a little bit of water to blend it out and now I move on with the mountain make sure that the sky is completely dry before you paint the mountain and for the mountain I 
will be using the same mixture of ultramarine and pan gray, but I also mix a little bit of indigo to uh, have to make it have a little bit of colors uh, to distinguish with the sky. And uh, this is also the mountain in the distance, so you just keep it very light. Just put a little bit of colors at the top of the mountain to indicate that there's a mountain far away. Uh, for the rest, just use the water to blend it out. At the end, if the mountain comes out too light, we can always go back and add more colors. And now I'll be moving on to the pie trees area. Uh, I will you I will be painting this area first. As you can see, this is the area where the pie tree is still in the background, in the distance, far away. So remember, if you want to communi communicate distance, you will use um, cool colors and put less detail. I don't know if you can notice, but um, in the reference photo, there's also like. A lot of high trees at the bottom of the mountain uh, they have dark green tone but um, in this painting I will remove that detail because I think that um, we already have a lot of green from the high trees in the background the middle ground as well so those details are not really necessary in the painting but if you like to have that detail in your painting, uh, feel free to do so. This is just my personal reference. As you can see, when I move closer to the foreground, the pie tree's color is going to get warmer. So in order to warm up a green, you can either add um, any warm yellow like cadmium yellow or maybe yellow ochre uh, into uh, the whatever green that you refer and remember this is just the first layer so we just keep it as light as possible because later on we will add another layers and add more detail into this in order to make the colors blend well you can you may want to wet the paper first before applying the colors And now I'll be painting the other side and basically I will just repeat the same process as I did with the left side. And you may also notice that in order to make it look like there's a lot of trees, like make it look like um, to give an illusion of trees, I also use the tip of my brush to kind of make the pointed tip. Um, it looks like that you're drawing a vertical line so that people when they look at it they will have the illusion that there's a lot there's a bunch of trees right there and one thing I also mentioned a lot in my videos that if you want to make the painting look more interesting you can also mix the colors directly on the paper make sure you just wet the area that you want to mix the color first and then apply different colors on top of it like here, if you want to have green, then you can apply yellow and maybe sap greens or any blue so that it will turn into green when they mix together on the paper. And here for the bushes in the foreground, I'm just going to use a lot of warm color like uh, cadmium yellow or ochre, mixing with either hooker green or sap greens in order to create a very vibrant and warm green tone to communicate perspective in painting so the closer the object close to it the more vibrant it's gonna be okay and now we just finished the first layer it's basically just the blocking out step so that we can block the color in the areas and later and later on i'm gonna go in with my small brush this is the silver black velvet and we're gonna add in more detail so before we can move on with the next step i will have to wait for this layer to be completely dry so while waiting for it to be dry feel free to just relax and go and grab your drinks Okay guys, now we're back. Everything is dry, but before moving on, I'm just gonna quickly extend this area a little bit. 
just to give it a little bit more space and now I'll be adding more detail uh, starting with the pie trees from far away um, here I'm just gonna use the same colors but with a little bit darker value and start drawing um, random pie trees here and there you don't have to paint a lot of pie trees just a couple of them to have a little bit of uh, definition uh, so people look at it and they will know oh there's a pie tree is far away that's it um, actually you see that I'll just uh, paint a little bit at the top uh, but for the bottom I'll just go in use water and blend them well with the background and yeah so basically you just keep repeating the same step until you feel satisfied with the look and just remember one thing that uh, when it moves closer to the middle ground and foreground you will use a lot of uh, warmer cool green and try to keep it loose don't put too much detail otherwise it's gonna turn very muddy and also you can have a slightly different green tone to make the area look more colorful like uh, the area out in the sunlight they're gonna have more yellow in it but the area where there's no sunlight you can actually add more blue to darken the green I personally think that this step is just so soothing and relaxing to paint so basically you just paint pie tree but in a very loose and very um, relaxing way so just relax and uh, take your time you don't have to rush and yeah that's how you create an illusion of a lot of trees when you look at the photo you may feel overwhelmed at first because there's so much there's a lot of trees how am i gonna paint all of those trees but actually in painting you don't paint every single tree to create a forest or just basically paint the first layer like the um, the lightest value and later on to add a couple of detail and that's it you got like a forest and here in a painting like this where there's pretty much just trees and mountain and sky so you surely will have a lot of greens in there and to make the painting more interesting and more vibrant make sure that you include a lot a different uh, shade of greens in it don't just use one green because it's gonna look very flat and gonna make the painting look a little bit boring and by the way, when you paint the pie tree, make sure that you uh, make the height of the pie trees slightly different. Don't make them too uniform, otherwise it's gonna look unnatural. And now I'll be moving on to the other side and basically just keep doing the same process. As you can see, even though painting is an art, but there are certain uh, repetitive steps that you have to take. But don't take it as something boring, take it as something that makes you feel relaxing and just uh, slow you down and just take time and play some music in the background and slowly keep painting. And also this is when you don't have to think a lot because you already know what you're going to paint so just really relax and enjoy the process next we move on we moving on to paint the pushes in the foreground as you can see I'm just slowly painting on top of the first layer different uh, small shape to give the push some texture and also apply different kind of greens as well you can see here there's a couple of sap green a couple of um, yellowish green that mixing with uh, cadmium yellow or yellow ochre and um, at the bottom of the bush is gonna be where the shadow is so I'm, I'll be using a lot of dark green over there next I'll be mixing 
another green but this time it's gonna be a very dark green to paint some shadow to make dark green my favorite way is to mix with indigo but you can also mix with red because red is complementary of green and this is the color theory in painting um, I would suggest that you all you it's good to learn a little bit the basic of color theory so you know um, about how to mix uh, certain colors when you're painting and now as you can see I'm adding the darkest value of green into a certain spot in the middle ground area the reason I know where to add the darkest value is by looking at the reference photo and this is when the reference photo comes in handy sometimes we don't really know about the uh, where to add the shadow or the light so it's always good to have a reference photo but it's not necessary that you have to copy the reference photo 100% you can always make some changes um, according to your personal reference and by adding the darkest value it's gonna give uh, the painting contrast and because of that we feel like the painting is coming together and now I will just keep adding the darkest value into the painting into the area by looking at the reference photo until I am satisfied with the overall result and I think that these steps are going to be repeated in every watercolor painting um, watercolor painting is all about layers, value and um, contrast so if you can figure out the different value in a painting and um, know how to apply the brush stroke and just apply uh, a layer on top of another layers I think that you're good to go and you can tackle any photo that you like it's also important that you know how to simplify a painting so that it will you will make it easy for yourself don't make it too complicated or overwhelming otherwise it's gonna be very easy to give up I'm just kind of adding more detail into the bushes in the forefront since it's um, in the foreground and then it's close to the viewers so it's okay to add more detail and focus more in this area but for any area that's far away you don't have to just leave it very simple and loose so that we can communicate distance And now look like there's also like the grasses that, that extended from the uh, pie trees area. Um, so I will be adding that detail into my painting as well. Because I think that's going to add more interest for the painting. Uh, for this one, I'll be using the dry brush technique. Since this is an Archie's cold brass watercolor paper, so it has a little bit texture on the surface. So it's gonna be a gray paper to work with the dry brush techniques. I think dry brush technique is one of my favorite one to do because it creates a very interesting texture without you adding any detail. And to make it look more realistic, I'm just going to add a little bit of shadow using the dark green. 
I also use the dry brush for the couple of brushes in the foreground as well. And finally, we move on to the water. To paint the water, I will be using the same mixture for the sky because basically this water is wa is the sky reflection. So I'll be using ocean marine with paint gray. I will wet the area first and after that apply the water. This is also the first layer. Uh, we are gonna add more detail into the water later. This is the area where you can see like the sparkling. Um, I think this is where the sunlight hits. So I will create that using the dry brush techniques as well. I think dry brush technique is very useful and it can give you a lot of effects in your painting if you know how to do it. just creating the reflection of the trees by drawing the uh, horizontal line is a very short line like that very loose you don't have to give it too much detail it's just a reflection I want to add it to make it look more a little bit more um, real And I also apply the same brush strokes to create uh, the ripples for the water. The painting is pretty much almost done. What I am doing right now is as I always do in my all my video is that the final step for you is to sit back and look at the painting and see if there's any area that needs uh, some sort of adjustment and you just kind of do it accordingly. For example, if I think that this area needs a little more contrast, I'm gonna add more color into it. And um, I see that my mountain is a little bit too light so I will add a little bit more detail and I also add a couple of dry brush to create some texture for the mountain. Also I wanted to add more, a little bit more colors for the sky just a little bit because I want the skies to remain as the lightest value area for this painting. Now we done, um, I will just sign my name and here is the final painting.
guys thank you so much for watching and i am very happy with how this one turned out and if you like this video please don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this in the future and i will see you in my next video bye